Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton. Lunch hour's almost over. If Mr. Burton doesn't come out pretty soon, he's gonna miss me. Uh, Mr. Burton, I'm Mr. Williams, the hotel manager. I do hope everything's satisfactory. Everything is splendid, thank you. And Mrs. Burton thanks you for the lovely flowers you sent her. It's my pleasure. She's not here. <laughs> she's, uh, she's out shopping. What else? Uh, did somebody come to fix your shower? Yes, yes. Sam the plumber is in there now. Tell me, has the crowd thinned out in the lobby a bit? I'd like to get out. Oh, no, I'm afraid it's getting worse. The last time I looked, there were four newsmen, six photographers, an assortment of fans, and a bus tour of the movie stars' homes. A bus tour of the movie stars' homes? Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, temporarily, you and Mrs. Burton have replaced Lawrence Welk and Liberace. I'm profoundly moved. That almost makes up for not winning the Oscar. <laughs> What about the back way to the hotel? Could I get out there? No, no, that's completely blocked by the Elizabeth Taylor fan club, Glendale Chapter. <laughs> In order to be a member, I gather, you have to have seen National Velvet ten times. <laughs> They're lucky. I have to see it once a week. <laughs> Do you really? Actually, I like our fans. They're very necessary, of course. But I would like to get out just once without being recognized. Yes, it must be terrible. Yeah, I can't even go sightseeing. Everybody in the world has been to Disneyland except me and Khrushchev. <laughs> and it's too late for him now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to get out. I promised Elizabeth I'd get her ring fixed. Is that the ring? <laughs> Is there any other? <laughs> Yes, of course, I'm terribly sorry. Um, now, if there's anything at all you want, you will please call me. Yes, thank you. You're very kind. Well, got your shower all fixed, Mr. Burton. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh... Oh, Sam, Sam, just a minute. I've just had an idea. Mr. Williams, I think I have a plan for getting out of the hotel without being recognized. Oh, what is it? Well, what if I borrowed his uniform and his tools and went out disguised as a plumber? Excellent. Is that all right with you, Sam? Is that all right with me? Are you kidding? Oh, why? Why don't I tell the boys at the shop that I loaned my overalls to the guy that's married to Elizabeth Taylor? Thank you, Sam. Have fun, Dick. <laughs> I'm afraid you've mistaken me for someone else. I'm, I'm Sam, the plumber. Yeah, I know. I need you. Are you free? Free? What man is ever free? <laughs> well, I, I need a plumber, and I need him right away. Uh, I'm afraid that's out of the question. I'm through for the day. But, but wait a minute now. If I don't get a leaky faucet fixed, I'm going to get fired. Well, I'm awfully sorry about your leak, lady, but I cannot help there you. There he is! 
Fix that force of boy. Oh, wouldn't you know? Only chance I get to see Richard Burton, I got a date with a plumber. <laughs> All right, come on. Tell him I waited as long as I could. Get in the car. <laughs> Here we are. All right, the bathroom is in there. Come on. Madam, for the last time, I cannot fix your faucet. I'm not a plumber. Well, if you're not a plumber, why did you say you were? And why are you dressed in those clothes? Well, I might as well tell you. I was endeavoring to leave the hotel incognito. I'm Richard Burton. Oh, sure, and I'm Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Believe me, you're not. <laughs> now, look. I certainly ought to know what Richard Burton looks like. I have seen all of his pictures. Oh, I'm sorry you won't believe me, but... You've seen all of his pictures? Every one. <laughs> now, look. Why don't you fix the faucet? It won't take but a minute. Well, I'm terribly sorry, madam, but I simply must leave. Now, look! I I'm not kidding! What am I going to do? If that faucet isn't fixed today, I'm going to get fired. Really, I am. You've got to believe me. I'm going to be out of a job, and I've got two children to support. Oh, all right, all right. I'll fix your <laughs> faucet, or I'll try. Where is it? Is it in there? Yes, it's right in there. Oh, thank yes, you. Good. Thank you. Which one is it? It's that one, the cold water faucet. That, that one? Yeah. yeah. Right. I think it needs a washer, whatever that is. <laughs> I hope I turn this the right way. It's a stubborn little beast, isn't it? You're English, aren't you? Certainly not. I'm a Welshman. Oh, is there a difference? Marine Beto heed money funny and you can yell here in Wallace. What does that mean? It means. Bite your tongue in Welsh. <laughs> it loses a little in translation. Well, whatever you are, you certainly have a very nice voice. Thank you. Have you ever thought about being an actor? It has crossed my mind. Actually, I've, uh, I've done a little Shakespeare. Would you like to hear some? Would I like to hear a little Shakespeare? Mm. Well, all right, but I'm going to have to deduct the time from your wages. <laughs> Let me see. For God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the death of kings. How some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed, some sleeping killed, all murdered. For within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king keeps death his court. And there the antic sits scoffing his state, grinning at his pomp, allowing him a little breath, a scene to monarchize, be feared and killed with looks, comes at the last and with a little pin bores through his castle wall. And farewell, king. You better stick to your plumbing. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Oh! Good heavens! <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid I neglected to turn off the water. Yeah, well, nothing personal, Sam, but uh, your plumbing makes your acting look good. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get out of my wet coveralls. All right, I'll get my purse. Finish that up. All right, here's your money. Twenty-three fifty. I'm taking fifty cents off for that Shakespeare. <laughs> Here you are. 
No, 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 I, I couldn't take that. Oh, come on now, I insist. I made a deal. After all, you did help me save my job. You can use it to get a haircut. <laughs> Lucille! What? Lucille! What? You will never believe who's in this building. Who? Richard Burton. No. Yes. Yes, somebody saw him come in, and the word spread like wildfire. Oh, All the lobby is filled with screaming women determined to get your autograph. It is the most... It's you! True? Oh, no. Oh, no, it is you. It really is. Oh, and the things I said... Oh, I apologize. Can you ever forgive me, Your Highness? Uh, no ceremony, please. Just kiss my ring and get up. <laughs> oh, but can you ever forgive me? You're forgiven everything. And now, if you don't mind, I'll leave. You know, uh, Mr. Burton, sir, you have a problem. You'd never get through the lobby. But may I suggest that you wait here, I'll go downstairs and spread the rumor that you've gone out the back way to the parking lot. Then you can slip out the front door. Oh, bless you, dear boy. <laughs> well, it's the least I can do for you. We have so much in common. Oh, we... Uh, oh, we do? Oh, yes. Yes, during my college days, I starred in our drama club's version of Anthony and... Cleopatra. Ah. <laughs> ah, wonderful role, Anthony. He was Cleopatra. <laughs> it was an all-boys school. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll see that you get out of here safely. Leave everything to me. A cab! A cab! My kingdom for a cab! <laughs> I don't suppose there's any point in standing around? Oh, no. No, we, we really shouldn't just stand around, I guess. Uh. <laughs> uh. 